Good afternoon, my world people. We are still looking at symptoms of acute tubular necrosis, which is a continuation of a subtopic we started yesterday. For the better part of this month, we have been talking about kidney failure. It's a broad topic, an important topic, because as I have been saying, in our body, we have three most important organs, and you can't name them without having kidneys as one of them. We have the heart, the liver, and the kidneys, then the others follow. I have not said that the other organs are not important, but these are the most important organs of your body. That's why I decided to take time while I was discussing about kidney failure. If you walk into several hospitals, you will find this disease is everywhere. Many people are on dialysis. And we suffer from this disease because we ignore simple things. For example, the over-the-counter over drugs. Why should you keep on buying unnecessary drugs from the shops or from the chemist without knowing what you are suffering from? Why can't you take your time when you feel ill? Go to the hospital, go through laboratory tests, get to know what you are suffering from, then you get a specific medication for your illness. That's why I've been encouraging you people that we, can, we change our mentality. And when we change, we will spare our kidneys. So before we continue, if you are watching this channel for the first time, take a second or two to subscribe and put the notification bell on so that whenever I produce a video like this, YouTube will automatically notify you and you will never miss any of our educational partners. For the returning subscribers, I always appreciate you people because we are where we are at the moment, out of your support. Symptoms of acute tubular necrosis. It's a continuation. So the fourth symptom a patient will present with is that the patient will urinate very little or no urine at all. Urinate very little or not at all. That is a danger sign. Because how can you be healthy? Or how can a, a, a person fail to urinate? For example, for a whole day. It's quite abnormal. Retain fluid or experience swelling in your body. So this person will retain fluids or experience swelling in your body. If I get back to what we have been discussing, we said that kidneys help in eliminating excessive flu excess fluids from your body. So if the kidney function is lost, that means the function of eliminating the fluids will be dead and the fluids will be retained in your body. This causes the swelling of your body. You will have episode, episodes of confusion. Episodes of confusion. The patient will experience nausea and vomiting. Let me repeat these uh, symptoms again. The patient will urinate very little or no urine. The patient will retain fluids or experience swelling of your body. The patient will have episodes of confusion. The patient will experience nausea and vomiting. I hope you are together up to that point. So let's get to another subtopic whereby we'll be discussing about the causes of acute tubular necrosis. What causes acute tubular necrosis? 
the most common cause of acute tubular necrosis is a lack of oxygen reaching the cells of your kidneys. Very important. If your kidney cells lack oxygen, definitely it's a problem. So the most common cause of acute tubular necrosis is lack of oxygen reaching the cells of your kidneys. If blood can reach your kidneys due to blockage or decreased flow, your kidneys can be damaged or destroyed. We all know that blood carries oxygenated blood from the lungs to all the body parts. So if it happens that blood can reach your kidneys due to blockage or decreased flow, your kidneys can be damaged or destroyed. This is a very important point. If blood can reach your kidneys due to blockage or decreased flow, your kidneys can be damaged or destroyed. This lack of blood flow can be caused by hypotension and certain drugs. This lack of blood flow to your kidneys can be caused by hypotension. That means low blood pressure. So if the blood pressure is, is low, it means the heart is not in a position to pump blood to all body parts. So if it happens that the oxygenated blood is not reaching the, 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 the kidneys, it can cause acute tubular necrosis. So, this lack of blood flow can be caused by hypotension and certain drugs. That's why I'm telling you people, don't use drugs anyhow. Before you use any drug, make sure you have gone to the hospital, you have gone through laboratory tests, the doctor has diagnosed you with a certain disease, then you are given specific drugs for whatever disease you are having. But the act of buying uh, the drugs anyhow, you're just guessing, I'm having malaria, you go buy malaria and maybe you don't have malaria, you go buy painkillers. This is very dangerous. Let's change from this mentality and we will save our kidneys. Harmful substances in your blood can also damage tubules. Harmful substances in your blood can also damage your tubules. Toxins may change the way cells in the tubules function. Toxins are simply waste products. So, toxins may change the way cells in the tubules function. Certain chemicals and medications such as antibiotics, anesthetics, and radiology drugs may cause acute tubular necrosis if your body reacts negatively to them. This is very important that certain chemicals and medications such as antibiotics, anesthetics, antibiotics are the drugs we use to kill bacteria in our systems. Anesthetics are drugs that are used when you are having, you are going for surgery. There are those drugs you are given so that you may fall a deep sleep and you may not feel the surgery. Those are what we call anesthetics. And uh, uh, radiology drugs. Radiology drugs are used when somebody is on cancer treatment or cancer management. So certain chemicals and medications such as antibiotics, anesthetics, and radiology drugs may cause acute tubular necrosis if your body reacts negatively to them. Who is at risk of getting acute tubular necrosis? Who is at risk for acute tubular necrosis? Oh, what age group 
on who is prone to acute tubular necrosis. A number of factors may place you at risk for acute tubular necrosis. The risk factors depend on your overall health and any other medical issues such as the following. A number of factors may place you at risk for acute tubular necrosis. The risk factors depend on your overall health and any other medical issues such as the following. I hope you get this point that a number of factors may place you at risk for acute tubular necrosis. The risk factors depend on your overall health and any other medical issues such as number one, recent injury to your body, especially kidneys. Recent injury to your body, especially kidneys. For example, when you are involved in an accident, yeah, you may get injured at the kidney area. So the trauma may cause blood clots or another blockage in the blood vessels servicing your kidneys. Remember we have said that blood carries oxygen to the uh, kidney uh, cells. So if there is any compromise on the way, any blockage, this will affect the kidney negatively. So recent injury to your body, especially kidneys, the trauma may cause blood clots or another blockage in the blood vessels servicing your kidneys. Number two, a bad reaction to a blood transfusion. If you are given the bl uh, wrong blood or poor transmission, transfusion, sorry, a mistake may happen during cross matching. Then you are given the wrong blood. Wrong blood, I mean. You might be blood group A and we were given uh, blood that comes from blood group O. Definitely there will be a reaction because if you are blood group A, you should get a blood group A blood. Anything other than that will cause a bad reaction. So a bad reaction to a blood transfusion. Your body may reject or destroy the blood cells in the in transfused blood, a bad reaction to a blood transfusion. Your body may reject or destroy the blood cells in transfused blood. This may lead to, a, to problems if your body can't get sufficient blood supply to the kidneys. A bad reaction to a blood transfusion. Your body may reject or destroy the blood cells in transfused blood. This may lead to problems in your body. This may lead to problems if your body can't get sufficient blood supply to the kidneys. I hope there is no question up to that point. And this marks the end of our discussion today. Thank you for those who have been following me. Let's continue encouraging our brothers and sisters to subscribe and make this channel a greater place to be. Let's have a wonderful day ahead.